All right, so here is a numerical example about monopoly and sort of let's put all the theory into practice. So here's the question I'm going to read. So there's a startup that has developed a new hearing device which is unique in the market. So this is a, um, a standard uh, monopoly question. Demand for this device is given by Q equals 24 minus... 0.5p. All right, so the notation does not necessarily have to be the same y. Uh, so here, instead of y, we have q, where q is the quantity that the consumers are willing to purchase. All right, so that's quantity. And then p is the price, as usual. Okay. Um, producing the device involves total cost of, so this is the cost function which is uh, Q squared plus 36. All right, so part A, so there are a bunch of parts. Uh, how many units of hearing device will the company produce? So what is the optimal Q? At what price will the company sell the device? What's the monopolist P? How much profit does the company make? Okay, uh, if this were a competitive market, how many units of the device would be sold? Okay, so the competitive equilibrium uh, output and competitive equilibrium price. And then finally, calculate the deadweight loss of the monopolist. All right, so basically this question is asking what exactly we have learned up until this point. So um, that's it. So basically two functional forms would be enough to solve the rest of the question. But don't forget, again, these are question-specific assumptions, right? The demand curve, the cost function, etc. So uh, let's look at the monopoly case first. Uh, well, what is the monopolist uh, profit maximizing quantity and price? Well, simple. First of all, calculate revenue. Right? Revenue is always the same. Price times quantity. I don't know why I'm writing small. Okay, so what is price? The price is, oh, okay. So this is not inverse demand curve. This is the demand curve. So I better make this as an inverse demand curve because it's going to make things easier for me. So what does that mean? That means uh, take P on one hand, on the one side, and put everything else on the other side and leave P alone. So that means multiply both sides by two. So it's gonna be 48 minus two Q. So that's the inverse demand curve. So whenever I see price, I basically plug the inverse demand curve times the quantity, which is Q, which we don't know and we're gonna find. Minus, oh, this is revenue, I'm sorry. So what is marginal revenue of the monopolist then? Uh, well, it's the derivative of this guy. So it's 48 minus 2q squared. It means 4q. So that's the marginal revenue of the monopolist. What about the marginal cost? Well, the cost is this function. So it's derivative with respect to q is 2q plus 36, gone. All right, so we don't need to worry about that. Good. So therefore, the marginal revenue of the monopolist must be equal to marginal cost, right? Uh, to, to maximize profit, that means uh, the 48 minus 4q equals 2q, which is the marginal cost. So if you solve that, 6q equals 48, well then q is equal to 8. So that's the monopoly output level. Good. What about the monopoly price, p monopoly? Well, go back to the demand curve, all right? So 48 minus, so if you sell eight units of quantity, what should be the price? The market clearing price. So two times eight. So this is, it's not 2.8, it's two times eight. Okay, be careful. So 48 minus 16, which is uh, 232, hopefully. Okay. So that's the monopolist price, that's the monopolist quantity. That's it. That's basically part A and B. Oh, by the way, Let's first verify the profit because when the profit is, uh, I'm sorry, not the profit, when there is a fixed cost, all right, um, this mm, critical point may actually not be the optimal point, 
All right. Um, I hope this is not confusing. So here's the thing. So fixed cost, fixed cost, and no fixed cost. So usually, if there's no fixed cost, the profit function is something like this. All right. I mean, it's going to be negative for some quantities, positive for some others, and then maybe negative if you produce too much because the cost will overwhelm the revenue. So the, the Q star, the, the monopoly or whatever, I mean, this has nothing to do with the competitive firm or the monopolist. Uh, so the optimal quantity, you know, the first order conditions, marginal revenue equals marginal cost, is going to give you the optimal quantity if there's no fixed cost. So you don't have to worry about anything. But if there's a fixed cost, you may actually have a profit function something like this. I mean, the profit is never uh, positive. It's always negative. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, then what did I find here? Well, you still found the point where your profit is maximum. All right, so that's still the marginal revenue equals marginal cost where your profit is maximum, but even that maximum is negative. All right, so sometimes the, 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 the instructors or the question uh, would like to challenge you and gives you a fixed cost. So in those instances, you should definitely calculate the profit and see with those quantity and prices, the profit is actually positive. If it is positive, there's nothing to worry. You can skip, I mean, you can ju jump to the uh, next question. But if it is negative, all right, well, then you have to be careful because the question should give you some other hints. It, this question doesn't. And so for that reason, this should be, uh, the profit should be positive. And in fact, it is positive. I'm not going to calculate it. You can, you can do that, but it's positive. But uh, if, if it is negative, well, then uh, it means the firm, uh, if, 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 if the firm enters to this market, it's going to make loss. Then the question is, will the monopolist ever enter to this market at the first place? Because if you not enter the market, you will probably receive zero profits. This is uh, usually the normalization. Like not entering is zero profit and entering is either positive or negative profit. And so you first make, should I enter or not enter? And once you enter, you know, you should determine how much quantity to produce. So when you have a no fixed cost, you will always enter because your profit will always be positive for some values if there's no fixed cost. But if there is a fixed cost, it may always be negative. And in those instances, you actually prefer not to enter to the market at the first place. All right. So that's a, uh, a, an important point that I, would, I wanted to remark. Whenever you have a fixed cost, just be cautious. Calculate the profit. I mean, with the quantity 8, with the price 32. So the revenue is 32 times 8. And the cost is um, Q square, which is 64 minus 36. All right. So this has got to be higher than uh, zero. And it is. So now the competitive markets. I mean, if this cost function was the aggregate uh, cost function in a competitive market, what would be the competitive equilibrium price and output? Well, the marginal cost, remember, is, is the derivative of this guy, so it's 2Q, okay? The price, I mean the demand curve, is 48 minus 2Q. So we know that in a perfectly competitive market, marginal revenue, which is P, equals marginal cost. So therefore, we should solve quantity that, solves, that satisfies this inequality. So price is 48 minus 2Q. The marginal cost is 2Q, so 4Q equals 48, hence Q equals 12. So the competitive, let's denote it as QC. So the competitive firm produces more output. What about the price? Well, just plug this into the demand curve um, to find the competitive equilibrium price. So quantity is 12 times 2, 24. So 48 minus 24, so competitive equilibrium price is 24. All right, charges a lower price. All right, 
as we predicted. So then finally, what is the dead weight loss, the size of the dead weight loss? I prefer to draw this quantity versus price graph. So this is what the linear demand curve will look like. 48 minus 2Q, the boundaries are going to play important role because there's going to be some triangle. So I want to find the area of this triangle. So when Q is zero, price is 48. So this inter uh, the Y intercept is 48. When P is zero, Q is 24. So this uh, intercept is 24. Okay. Um, all right. Well, what about the marginal revenue of the monopolist? It's this guy. Let's draw that. The 48, so when Q is zero, again 48. And when the marginal revenue is zero, Q is 12. So the midpoint in a sense. All right, so that's the marginal revenue of the monopolist, okay? What about the marginal cost, the third graph that I need? It's two times Q, so it's a straight line. So it's not a 45 degree line. Uh, but slightly steeper. So something like this. I don't know. I mean, uh, marginal cost equals 2Q. Okay, so those points of intersections matter. I, I'm sorry. It's just coincidence that this point and this point coincides. I'm sorry. Probably they don't. So what is this quantity? Well, this is the competitive equilibrium quantity. Q competitive, which is 12. And this is the competitive equilibrium price, P competitive, which is 24. Well, it should be midpoint. It's not. I'm okay. I'm sorry. Um, well, what about this quantity? This is the monopoly quantity, Q monopoly. Um, again, I need all those numbers because later I'm going to find the areas of rectangle. Um, so I will need those uh, numbers. And then the price uh, is, what is it? Uh, 32. This is the monopolist price. Okay. So here I know 32. I need to find this point as well. I already know this. So I know that this difference. Okay. So what is this point? Well, this point, when quantity is eight, this is the marginal cost right? This is the marginal cost curve. This is the marginal cost of producing eight unit. So it's two times eight. So this is 16. So under monopoly, you don't have to calculate the total surplus of the competitive firm and then, you know, substrate. So when you do it on graph, it's easier uh, for that matters. So remember the consumer surplus is this area under monopoly, consumer surplus monopoly. The producer surplus is this area, all right? So this is the producer surplus. So this triangle is the dead weight loss. And this is the area that I need to find. So the dead weight loss, therefore, yes, it is the, the difference between the total, sub, uh, sub, total surplus of competitive minus total surplus of monopoly but I don't really need to calculate the total surplus, just find the difference, which is this triangle. So I can find that. Uh, the base of this triangle is 32 minus 16, um, multiplied by the height of this triangle, which is 12 minus eight, divided by two, right? So the dead weight loss is basically 16 times four divided by two. So it's 32 units. All right. So dead weight loss doesn't have any dollar sign or anything. It's just a unit. So 32 is the size of the dead weight loss. So this is exactly how we solve this monopoly problem. Okay. I hope that was clear.